who loses the most weight on Monjaro? An analysis of four surpassed trials that looked at Monjaro's effects on weight loss has yielded some interesting results and helps us understand who is likely to benefit the most from Monjaro and who may not benefit as much. Monjaro, also known as the drug terzepatide, operates in a way similar to semaglutide, which is sold under the two better known brand names, Ozempic and Wagavi. Both terzepatide and semaglutide activate GLP-1 receptors, but terzepatide has an additional impact on another receptor known as GIP. Just like semaglutide, terzepatide comes in two brand names, Monjaro, approved for diabetes treatment, and Zepbound, which is approved for weight loss. Monjaro and Zepbound are essentially the same. They even use the exact same doses. The only difference between them is the FDA-approved label and likely insurance coverage. Likewise, Ozempic and Wagavi are quite similar, although Wagavi uses a slightly higher maximum dose compared to Ozempic. Recent studies indicate that Monjaro or Zepbound may be slightly more effective in terms of blood sugar control and weight loss, with fewer side effects when compared to Ozempic or Wagavi. However, it's worth noting that these impressive results from studies are often presented under ideal conditions, and weight loss medications tend to showcase their best outcomes. So just because these studies achieved up to 15% or 20% weight loss with Monjaro doesn't guarantee the same results for everyone. However, thanks to a recent analysis, we now have a somewhat better idea of who is more likely to experience significant weight loss with Monjaro. As a quick side note, when the study mentions that Monjaro is more effective or leads to a greater weight loss in a particular group, it means that Monjaro has a higher likelihood of causing at least a 15% weight loss in that specific group of people. Now, let's consider the first set of factors, which are related to demographics. It was observed that women tend to lose more weight than men when using Monjaro. This finding isn't entirely surprising because previous studies on various weight loss medications and surgeries have also shown similar trends. While we can't pinpoint the exact reason why women tend to lose more weight, it's believed to be connected to differences in how fat is distributed in their bodies. Additionally, women often tend to have more fat stores to begin with when compared to men, so they have more to lose. So while not groundbreaking news, it's still an interesting insight. The medication also appeared to be more effective in younger patients, but it's important to note that the average age of patients enrolled in these studies were mostly individuals in their 50s and 60s. So when we say younger, we're typically talking about individuals in their 40s and 50s, not people in their 20s or 30s. On the other hand, older patients, likely in their 70s, didn't experience as significant weight loss. This also aligns with general trends in weight loss, where younger individuals tend to respond better to various weight loss methods, like surgery, while older individuals tend to see more success with dietary and lifestyle changes. Monjaro also seemed to work better for individuals of white or Asian races, while African Americans and American Indians or Alaskan Natives had lower odds of achieving substantial weight loss. However, it's important to understand that the majority of participants in these studies were white, with less than 25% being ethnically non-white. Therefore, the study primarily focuses on the outcomes for white patients, and this disparity may not accurately reflect how Monjaro performs in the broader population. Another factor they considered is the other medications that patients may be using. Monjaro was primarily tested in individuals with diabetes, and the results indicated that patients who took the anti-diabetic drug metformin alongside Monjaro experienced more significant weight loss. This finding isn't too surprising as metformin is known to have some, although relatively mild, effects on weight loss on its own. Finally, they explored a set of factors related to a patient's health history. It turns out that individuals who were in better health before starting the treatment tended to lose more weight. Certain health measurements were linked to greater weight loss. For diabetic patients, starting with lower blood sugar levels and HbA1c values resulted in more substantial weight loss. Additionally, those with better lipid profiles, including lower LDL and total cholesterol levels and higher HDL levels, tended to achieve better results with Monjaro. On the flip side, patients who didn't experience as much weight loss with Monjaro typically had poorly controlled diabetes at the outset and poor lipid profiles like higher cholesterol. 
This suggests that individuals with diabetes or more severe metabolic issues often face greater challenges when trying to lose weight, primarily due to metabolic problems. Factors such as reduced fat metabolism, inflammation, and a diminished response to satiety hormones can all contribute to a slower rate of weight loss for these individuals compared to those with better metabolic health. An interesting side note is that a person's initial body weight didn't seem to influence the impact of Manjaro. In other words, whether someone was heavier or lighter before starting Manjaro didn't significantly affect the percentage of body weight they ultimately lost. In summary, several factors appear to influence how much weight a patient can expect to lose with Manjaro. Younger individuals, especially women, and those of white or Asian backgrounds tend to achieve greater weight loss results. Diabetic patients who combine Manjaro with metformin tend to do better. Additionally, individuals with lower blood sugar and better lipid levels before starting Manjaro tend to experience more significant weight loss. So if your blood sugar or lipid levels are currently not well controlled, taking steps to manage them through proper diet and exercise before starting Manjaro may enhance its weight loss effects. If you're already using another anti-diabetic medication, working with your healthcare provider to switch to metformin could also potentially boost the weight loss benefits of Manjaro. Obviously, some of these factors, like one's race, are beyond a patient's control. Nevertheless, this information can still offer clinicians and patients insights into what to anticipate when using Manjaro and how to optimize its usage. It's important that we recognize the limitations of these studies. One significant issue is their relatively short duration, lasting only about 40 or 42 weeks, which is just under a year. It's challenging to predict whether these differences in weight loss will remain as pronounced after a full year or two of taking the medication. It wouldn't be surprising if these differences in weight loss became less prominent or even disappeared by the end of the second year. Additionally, as mentioned before, the majority of participants in the studies were white, which doesn't provide the greatest representation of the general population. To better understand how an individual's race might affect Monjaro's effects, we would need studies that encompass a more diverse range of participants. What about Ozempic and Wagovi? Do the same factors apply to semaglutide, which is what these medications are based on? Unfortunately, there hasn't been a specific analysis like the one done for Manjaro on semaglutide, which is currently more popular, especially for weight loss. However, there is one study that examined real-world use of Wagovi and found some similar trends. Firstly, it confirmed that women tend to lose more weight than men, which aligns with what we've discussed before. Secondly, it observed that older age was associated with less weight loss, which isn't surprising either. Thirdly, it revealed that individuals with diabetes tended to lose less weight, mirroring the findings from Mongero's analysis. This study also showed that those taking metformin alongside semaglutide tended to lose less weight. However, this actually helps to confirm our previous point, that diabetics tended to lose less weight than healthy individuals. This is because individuals taking metformin usually have diabetes, which, due to their health condition, results in less weight loss compared to healthier, non-diabetic individuals not requiring metformin. Meanwhile, Monjaro's analysis only examined diabetics, so the metformin likely did help diabetics lose weight on semaglutide, like it did with Monjaro, but even then, their weight loss was less than that of non-diabetic individuals. Interestingly, those taking a different medication called linaclotide with semaglutide showed improved weight loss outcomes. Linaclotide is commonly prescribed for people with irritable bowel syndrome and chronic constipation. It's important to note that comparing these two studies to each other are not perfect. The Manjaro analysis focuses on tightly controlled research trials, while the semaglutide analysis looks at real-world use. Nevertheless, because they work in a similar way and share some similarities, it's reasonable to assume that some of the findings for Manjaro may also hold true for Ozempic and McGovey. At the end of the day, achieving more than a 15% weight loss, as seen in some patients using Monjaro or Wagavi, is typically only seen in ideal scenarios with specific individuals. In reality, most people like you and me using these medications in the real world probably won't be losing nearly as much. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you use Monjaro? And what are your experiences? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And if you found this informative, please leave me a like and share this video with someone you know who can use the info.